Love it or hate it, Windows 10 is here to stay. And let me tell you right now, folks, I'm in the I love it camp. Windows 10 is absolutely fantastic. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you some of the features that make Windows 10 so great. Now, I need to be careful here. We're gonna be looking at Windows 10 from the aspect of somebody who knows Windows 8 really well. So if you're not familiar with Windows 8, you might wanna watch that episode. So you're kinda of up to speed as to where we're at. Now there's a lot of new features here and a lot of aspects that are really cool. So I'm gonna break it up into individual chunks and I'm probably gonna start with what is most interesting to most people. And that's what I'm going to call interface improvements. Let's dive right into some of these interface improvements with my Windows 10 system I've got up and running right here. It all starts right here from the start button. Yay, start button. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice, especially if you're familiar with Windows 8, is that the old Windows 8 Metro desktop has now been reduced to part of the start menu itself. Now, it still acts pretty much exactly like the old Windows 8 Metro desktop work, except it's not taking up the entire screen. So I can come in, I can take little icons, I can move them around, I can resize them, I can take stuff from other parts of the system and bring it over. So it works pretty much exactly the way the old Windows 8 Metro desktop used to work. The big difference is now I have a choice. If you want to in Windows 10, you can actually set the screen up so it runs just like Windows 8, the full-blown Metro-style desktop. So I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can if you want. Let's take a look at what else we can do. Not only do we have this great little screen, but there's a couple little things that are actually kind of cool. First of all, let's take a moment and just click on some arbitrary app here. So, oh, let's go with Maps. Now, when I click on Maps, you'll notice that this is a Windows Store app. I still call them Windows Metro apps, but the official term is Windows Store apps. Now, back in the Windows 8 days, this would only be full screen. You wouldn't have a choice. It would be full screen and then you could close it and that was about it. Now we can go ahead and treat it just like any other regular Windows app with our minimize, maximize, windowed, and close button. So those are two features I really like, but probably my favorite interface improvement is simply something that's not even there anymore. Do you remember the old charm bar back in the Windows 8 days? I think Microsoft officially calls it Windows Charms. I call it the Charm Bar, mainly because, I don't know, it sounds right. Anyway, the old Charm Bar is happily gone from Windows 10. I can't tell you how many times back in the day with Windows 8, I'd be moving my mouse around, all of a sudden, this thing would appear out of nowhere, and I had to deal with it one way or another. So probably my favorite interface improvement is the fact that one little interface issue that used to be with Windows 8 ain't there no more. Now, those are pretty cool, but the next thing I'd like to talk about is a really cool feature. Now, if you're a Unix person, you're gonna be like, what's the big deal? And that is multiple desktops. Multiple desktops is a Windows 10 feature that in essence gives you a whole bunch of monitors when you only have one. So, I guess the easiest way to do this is to actually show you as to simply try to explain it to you. You Unix people are gonna laugh because you've had this feature for years. Now, here's my Windows 10 system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start something up here. There we go. So I got Wikipedia up and cooking. Now, what I wanna do is I refer back to Wikipedia all the time. So I'd like to have this handy, but I don't wanna leave it up on my screen to distract me all the time. So if you take a look down here, so this is your task view button. You just click on the task view button, and now if you look over here to the right, it says new desktop. So we're gonna click on this, and we now have a new desktop. If we click on here, it looks like, hey, where did my stuff go? But all I need to do is hold down control, window, and then I can use my left and right arrow keys, and I can swap back and forth between these. So I can leave Wikipedia up, but then I can come over here and look around on stuff on this particular uh, say I got like these files up. So it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. The beautiful part about desktops is I can have as, well, there is a limit, but as many of these as I want in essence. The thing about multiple desktops is that people who are not used to them usually have the hardest time understanding what they're gonna do with it. 
For me, a multiple desktop is a great feature to have when I have some application, like that Wikipedia that I have up and running, where I don't want it on the screen all the time, but I want quick access to it. Another friend of mine keeps his email up. Just he's got a browser open with his email. He just keeps that over there so his email isn't distracting him while he's doing his work. He hits the hotkeys and he can pop right over to it. So the whole idea of multiple desktops is your ability to do the kind of stuff that you would normally use lots of monitors or a lot of minimizing and maximizing and stuff like that. The beauty of these is that it's up to you what you want to do with it. Did you know that Internet Explorer that comes with Windows is one of the oldest web browsers around? It's not the oldest, but it's pretty old. Now, Microsoft has always had a problem with Internet Explorer. The problem is, is that Microsoft works really, really hard for backward compatibility. And over the years, Internet Explorer has become bigger and heavier and sluggier. And it's reached a point where folks like me really just never even consider Internet Explorer as a web browser. So to try to get themselves back into the world that's being stolen by Opera and Chrome and all these other types of web browsers, Microsoft introduced the new Microsoft Edge with Windows 10. Microsoft Edge is a web browser, but it's lighter, tighter, faster. It dumps a lot of backward compatibility, and it works really, really well. Let's take a look. So here's good old Microsoft Edge. I should say good young Microsoft Edge, certainly when compared to a lot of other stuff. Now, right now I've got it on Wikipedia because, well, I go to Wikipedia a lot. Now, in terms of search functions and stuff like that, it does a fine job, and it's quick, certainly compared to Internet Explorer, but it has one feature in particular I'd like to show you. So what we're going to do is take a look at something called Web Notes. So I'm here, and I'm taking a look at Wikipedia, and I'm like, wow, this is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button right here, and then I'm going to highlight it because this is really neat and I want to make sure that my buddies see it. So I can click on share and if I want to, I can email this, I can message it, I can put it in my OneNote account, I can even twit it. Of course, now there's going to be limitations based on the type of data you're sending, but the entire idea of WebNotes is to be able to share bits and pieces. WebNotes is kind of fun. And traditionally, when I would mess with stuff like this, I would probably just send a URL link to somebody, but I couldn't annotate. I couldn't cut and paste. I couldn't do anything with it. I would basically say, hey, Scott, take a look at this website, and then go down about three pages, look for this word, and tell me what you think of this graphic. So this is a really powerful tool for researchers, web designers who want to share great ideas. This is the one feature of Microsoft Edge that impresses me quite a bit. Now you might be saying, okay, well this is new and cool and lighter. What if I still need good old Internet Explorer? No worries. If you need Internet Explorer, he's still there for you. So there it is. Good old Internet Explorer ready for you to do whatever you need to do. I really do like Microsoft Edge. A lot of people are very entrenched these days in the browser preferences that they have. If you haven't given Microsoft Edge a try, I really, really suggest you give it a whirl. It's not too bad at all. Now, I've been talking for a while, and you know what? I think it's time for someone else to talk. Let me introduce you to Cortana. Now, you may be wondering why I'm wearing this incredibly attractive headset. Well, the reason is, is I'd like to show you Cortana. Cortana is Microsoft's voice assistant, and it comes with Windows 10. So those of you Mac people, all three of you out there, who use Siri, it's a pretty similar tool. Now, Cortana works beautifully. It it's actually works uh, almost scarily well. And uh, what I'd like to do is show you just a couple of features that I can do with Cortana. Now, Cortana traditionally starts off with a, hey, Cortana, what's the square root of pi? The answer is approximately 1.77. Pretty cool, huh? Now, a lot of times Cortana will make answers and will put it in just as you saw right there. If you ask it a question that it's not quite sure about, it'll usually just do a web browser search for you, usually through Bing or whatever your default search engine is. But it can be a lot of fun, too. So, let's try again. Hey, Cortana. What do you think about Google? I like to imagine the 
I'm feeling lucky button in Clint Eastwood's voice. <laughs> All right, so Cortana has a sense of humor too. For those of you who don't know, Clint Eastwood was an actor of your forefathers who was really good and we liked him. Anyway, Cortana is an absolute amazing tool and it's one that can be a lot of fun. One of the downsides to Cortana and something that bugs a lot of people is the fact that it has to be on the internet and that brings up the one issue that's a bit of a dark area for Windows 10 and that is what type of telemetry, what type of information is Microsoft sending from your system up and what are they doing with it? Microsoft 10 is pushed as a free upgrade and as we say in the IT industry, if you're not paying for something, it's because you're the product. Go ahead and enjoy Windows 10. I certainly do.